Hi guys, it's Wombat and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how to do the very things I get asked the most frequently about on my streams. No, it's not how I keep my skin so soft or how I'm able to look so young and beautiful despite being almost 50 years old. It's how I'm able to fly and teleport, turn night into day, remove the traffic, add more traffic, etc, etc. I've always referred you to someone else here on YouTube every time I've been asked how I do it, because excellent videos on how to do this stuff already exist. But evidently, not everyone is a rodent fan, so I've decided to make my own video and perhaps show you a couple of tricks that most of you never used before, but perhaps should consider. And besides, these tricks requires a little bit of config.cfg file editing, a file that all of my viewers should get familiar with because it is getting increasingly important to modify that file if you want to keep up with my map combos. So perhaps this is the first time you hear about the config.cfg file, maybe it's not. In any case, let's get started. The things I'll show you today works in the exact same way on both ETS2 and ATS, and most of them requires the use of the so-called console. The console isn't available out of the box though, it requires you to enable developer mode. In doing this, you don't change anything regarding your game as you're used to it. It doesn't affect performance or put your profiles or mods at any risk. Enabling developer mode only gives you access to some additional tools. I can't really see any risk in modifying the config.cfg file. On the contrary, you can do whatever you like with that file. And to get back to the default settings, you simply delete or rename the file and a new one with all the default settings will be created automatically when you restart the game. I've experimented a lot with the config file, so I've also deleted it numerous times and it has never caused me any problems doing so. In fact, deleting it has actually fixed a thing or two for me over the years, as settings tend to be added to it when you have a really bad crash for instance, or if you want to run a command that didn't really sit too well with the game. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're not already running either ATS or ETS2. If you are, close the game first and then open the config.cfg file. The path to the file is usually documents slash American or Euro truck simulator. And right there you should have the config.cfg file. Now you open the file with notepad. To enable developer mode there are two settings you need to change here. Search for useit g underscore console. There should be a number to the right of it saying 0 and you change that 0 to 1. Then you do a search for useit g underscore developer. That one should also say 0. And of course you'd also change that to 1. If you can't find these two settings, you're not looking in the right file. Seriously, don't add these settings to your file. You change them if found, but do nothing if you can't find them. Because if you can't find them, you're probably looking at a config file found in one of your profiles. Ignore that file and move up a couple of folders in the hierarchy. And again, the path to the files is usually documents slash American Truck Simulator or documents slash Euro Truck Simulator 2. Once you've made the changes and saved and closed the file, you may start ETS2 or ATS again. Once your profile has been loaded, you may want to verify that the developer mode has been activated. To do this, you open the console by pressing the tilde key. 
The tilde key will look different depending on your keyboard, but it is usually located just left of your one key. By pressing it, you should see the console. If you don't, it's either because you didn't press the tilde key or you didn't save the config.cfg file after you edited it. If you do see the console, congratulations, you just opened the door to God mode in Truck Simulator. If you don't, close the game, go back to the beginning of this video and start over again. Once the console is open, you can't do anything other than typing commands in the console until you close it again. Pressing drive or save or whatever doesn't do anything, it doesn't work until you close the console. The console can be used for a lot of different things and to be completely honest, most of it has no use for you and me. It's mainly targeting developers, duh. You and I though, we are mainly interested in the command line that we use for making changes to traffic, to teleport, to change the time of day, etc. The rest of it is just overkill for this video. You can activate a lot of commands directly from the profile view, but there are some that requires you to have pressed drive first. So for this video, we will do just that. Now press the tilde button to close the console if it's still open and then click on drive. Now that you're in game, we will start by learning to fly. To fly, you actually don't need to use the console. So instead of pressing the tilde button, you press the zero button and boom, now you're under your truck. If this feels uncomfortable, please press one to get back into your truck. And if you're okay with it, let's get ready to fly. To fly, you use the numeric keyboard and mouse to move and the scroll wheel on your mouse to adjust the speed. Press and hold the 8 key to move forward. Your mouse to change the angle and the scroll wheel to change the speed. If you're moving too fast, scroll to towards you and if it's too slow, scroll away from you. If you get lost, press 1 to get back inside your truck. At a low speed, experiment with the rest of the numeric keys to see how they can be used to move up, down, sideways, forward, backwards, and if you like, combine, for instance, the button 8 and 9 to move forward and right at the same time. This may take some time to get used to, but hey, I never said flying was easy. Flying around is useful if you want to look around, but it's also useful if you want to move your truck. To move your truck to your exact location, press F9, but before you do that, remember what I said, it will move your truck to exactly where you are. If that is 500 meters into the air, this is where your truck will be too, and then gravity kicks in. So when you press F9, make sure you're as close to the ground as you can, but make sure you're not too close, as this will cement your truck into the ground and probably cause a lot of damage as well. If you have a trailer or six connected to your truck, make sure there's enough room behind you for them as well. You are approximately just below your feet and behind your character in the truck when you press F9. So if you're using a truck with a nose, make sure there's enough room in front of you for that too when you press F9. The fact that this also moves your trailer can be considered if you have problems hooking up your truck to it. For instance, you perhaps have an old truck that doesn't work with advanced coupling, or you have a double trailer located in a space so tight you can't get your truck there. Just move your truck to wherever you want it, press F9 and the trailer will automatically be connected. 
Once you've mastered the technique of flying and moving your truck, it's time to unlock the powers of the console. There's a ton of different commands you can use and for none of them there are any help text or explanations, so although all of them do something, most of them are again for developers only. I'm gonna go through the ones I find to be the most useful, but if you're curious about the other commands there are, or if you can't remember exactly how you write a command, you can always start typing and then press tab. Pressing tab allows you to see all commands that uses the text you typed in. Just be aware that most of these commands when you type them are sticky, not just for the current session, but for the game entirely. And also, there's no special command that allows you to reset anything, so if you change the traffic to 10, you better know that the default is 1, so that you can reset it back to default again. But we will start with something easy, and probably the most popular command. It's the go to command. I regularly use the go to command to quickly move between cities and you activate it by pressing the tilde button to bring up the console and then type go to space name of the city. So go to space Berlin sends you to Berlin and since you're now actually flying you close the console by pressing tilde and then 8 and use the most to stare wherever in Berlin you want to go. And if you want to teleport your truck to Berlin as well, press F9. Please note that the city names you type in is found in the mod under def-city.sii, which usually equals the English name for that city. And so if you have city names translated to something else than English, your command may not work or may even send you to an entirely different city than the one you intended to go to. When considering map mods as well, we might have to consider cities in different parts of the world with the exact same English name, which makes it a little more complicated as the names in def slash city SSI not necessarily equals the English name of these cities. Examples are Ross and EAA that has a lot of either duplicate city names, as in city names also found in other countries, or city names that isn't translated to English and perhaps even uses Cyrillic letters. In these cases the city names you have to type in uh, perhaps even can't be guessed or you might not even have access to Cyrillic letters on your keyboard, so there's sometimes situations where you're unable to teleport to a city, but these situations are rare and I always solve it by teleporting to another city as close as possible and then fly to the city I want to go to. The next command I'm going to talk about is gset underscore time. This is a command that I use a lot when streaming. And the G set time allows you to, well, set the time to whatever you like. It does not work like sleep, so if you're a truck driver and you're already sleepy, this command won't make you less dozy. But it does work with cargo and freight markets, so if you can't find anything you like in the cargo or freight market, Move the time ahead a few hours, I usually set it for was 23 hours or so, and try again. The time you set is the actual time you want it to be in game when you use the command. Please note that you can't set a date, only hours when using this command. So as you can see it's bright daylight, it's the middle of the day, and I'm using the g underscore set underscore time space 06. By pressing enter now I'm gonna reset the time to 6 a.m. And there we go. Now if you want it to be um, 11 in the evening, g under, uh, 
g underscore set underscore time space 23. Now it's 11 p.m. g set underscore traffic is a command I also use frequently. The set traffic command is used to change the amount of traffic, the spawn rate of the traffic in game. And I usually set this value to 2 especially when doing map reviews and particularly if the map includes traffic. I want to show off as much of the traffic as I possibly can and the default setting for this command is 1. So by changing it to 2 it means that you'll have twice as much traffic. Setting it to 5 or up to the maximum of 10 makes traffic ridiculous. And note that setting this value higher than 1 also means you'll get more accidents. Setting it to 5 means that you'll see AI doing 5 more, five times more crazy shit. And there's a high risk you'll see 5 times more police in traffic if using this value as well. Of course, that can be eliminated by using the G underscore police command, but that is an on-off command, so you either have five times as many police cars in-game, or you have none whatsoever. You can also set the G set underscore traffic to zero to remove all traffic. G set underscore weather is a command I've used a few times, mainly on 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 scale maps, if I want a specific weather to appear. You can play God and make it rain or shine, it's all up to you. The different values you can use are, to my knowledge at least, the numbers 1 through 9, and odd numbers are rain, even numbers are sunshine. You could also change the weather gradually over some 20 minutes, but it's an additional value I don't use as I have no patience. Warp is a cool feature I've mainly used for review videos where you perhaps see me slowly circle or fly over a landscape and you have traffic and daylight rapidly changing. Warp speeds or slows time and can be used like I use it by setting very high values. Default is 1, very high values are 50 or even higher than that. A value many people use, I don't as I tend to do stream very long hauls anyway, is 0 0.8. This slow things down by 20% and give you a much nicer experience in game according to those who use it. This makes sense as traffic moves slower, traffic lights stay green or red longer, you move into curves slower, basically things become a bit more lifelike. There are at least a hundred different commands you can use. I've only gone through the ones I use regularly. But one last tip I'll give you is the G underscore FPS command that allows you and everyone else you are streaming your video to, to see your FPS if you set it to 1. Finally, you can also use the G underscore minicon 1 command to follow the error log as you drive. For most people this is perhaps not very useful, but I use the minicon command from time to time mainly when I try to figure out how to solve a problem as it can be valuable to drive by certain places and to see exactly where you get a specific error. And that is all the tips I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already subscribe as well and as always feel free to share this and all of my videos on any of your social media. It helps me grow so in advance thank you very much. Until next time take care everyone. Bye bye.